Hey, how's it going everyone? Back out of here on the Rep Scrambler. Um, I'm going to start putting the swing arm together, uh, bolt that up, get the collar in there, and then probably put the shocks on. Um, so I'm actually going to talk about real quick the bolt that I went with. It used to be a 3 a 16 by 4 inch. I went to 4.5 because I just feel like that was too short. Um, it was barely grabbing on the nut, basically right in there. And then uh, for the fork bolt, it used to be a 5 ace 18 6 by 3 ace long. I went with a 7 inch long uh, bolt just to extend it. I thought that it was also too short. So let's get this uh, collar all lubed up and insert it in there. All right, so my lube of choice is uh, Silglad. I use this for brake calipers. I've never had a problem with it. I've used wheel bearing grease for brake pins and they've always seized up on me. Even anti seize I don't know. I've had them gum up on me. So this stuff is like a silicone, I believe. And it just works really well. So I get this at like AutoZone or Advanced Auto. So I'm just gonna put it around here, a little bit inside and slide it in there. And then just so it can rotate freely rather than metal on metal or paint on paint. All right, so it's all lubed up. Let's put it into its new home. Let's see. Okay. I'm just going to do the bolt a little bit and mount into place. I think it's okay. The dog's itching. Okay. There we go. Now we'll get the nut on the other side. Hey. Okay. Send her home. All right. <clears throat> nice. Swing arm is installed and it's swinging. See, so I have through a lock washer, new washer, washer over here, and the nut. This nut actually uh, connects to your chain guard that goes this way. So I didn't replace this. Look at that character in there, but looking good. All right, let's put the shocks on. So I put two shocks on. I actually put on the old one and one of the new ones just to see the difference. Um, I am slightly regretting buying a new one because I should have I don't know, I think this looks maybe a little bit better, more OEM. I should have gotten this re-chromed, um, then obviously I can redo that. But I don't know, it's just not as beefy looking. So I'm still unsure about this, but just tacked them together and it's looking pretty good so far. But swing arm is generally tacked on. Um, I'm just playing around with this, but I did put a nylon washer there just so it wouldn't mess up the paint for now. Um, I might take it off and, you know, actually take the nylon out and before I really secure it down. But this is how it's looking so far. Um, I guess I'll keep moving and add more parts to it and finalize what I'm going to do with the rear shocks. All right, I made some progress on the bike. I got the two rear shocks installed with new hardware, tightened down nicely, and I did put the old uh, Rupp cover back on uh, just because I have it for now. Um, and then I'll order a new one if I feel like it, but this is cool just to have the old cover here and some old stitching from whenever. Um, one thing I've been actually uh, tackling and working on is trying to get the old paint off these uh, items here. I found a five gallon pail of chemical dip um, that they use for the frame, but it's pushing $400 and I don't really feel like spending that. So I did the next best thing and found some stuff over the counter. Um, people said that this would work, so I've been giving it a shot here and there. And so far it's okay. I mean, I put that a dab it here last night a dab of it here last night and uh, a plastic scraper and the paint was flaking right off. Um, I still, it didn't take off this primer, but as I uh, etched into it harder with this plastic scraper here, um, it was starting to come up. So it's just easier than just hard sanding everything. I will give this thing a whole coating at some point once I get closer to spraying these tanks and uh, the, the plate holder uh, once it warms up. So that's something I was just, you know, just testing out. But next thing I want to actually tackle is uh, the wheels. I got chrome back and boy did I spend a lot of money on this. Um, was it worth it? I don't know. Not really sure. I'm sure it was, but it was just very expensive. I mean, I should have seen that coming, but that's my own fault. Not a problem. It's my own issue and I got to deal with it. So here's the chrome. I'm going to start getting these wheels out and show you how they came out. But I started unpackaging. 
you know, it came out really good. He said that he could spend more time getting more of the pitting out, and I said forget about it. So that's why you still see some pitting hanging out in there. But overall, parts that weren't pitted look brand new, such as the forks, the hubs that were originally zinc. I think I said I was going to zinc plate them or clear them. I ended up chroming them, so we'll, we'll hopefully have a nice looking bike than OEM. Um, let me get these wheels out and see how everything looks. Alright, so here's the chrome. Here's one of the wheels. I'm not sure which one is which, but don't think it really matters. I'm sure I'll figure it out. But it looks really nice. They wrapped it in this like paper. Figure it all out. Alright, first chrome piece out of the package. I don't really understand how this works, where it's not finished here. Not that I really care. And it's finished here. Maybe it's the way they polish it. But it looks great. Pitting is my own fault, didn't get that taken care of, but it looks so much better than it used to, and so much better than the chrome spray paint I kept trying. There's one wheel. All right, here's all the chrome. I mean, it looks amazing. I'm not really a chrome guy at all, but like this handle for the brake, looks great. These forks, these look brand new. There's definitely no pitting going on here. They're so heavy. I mean, they look brand new. Handlebars, I'm gonna keep wrapped for now until I actually start to assemble the more of the bike so it just doesn't get scuffed up. And then I got stuff like the fenders I'll keep packaged for now just because that's such a finished piece and easily scratchable. So, But here's the chrome. Um, next I'm going to uh, wax everything. I want to start with the wheels. So I'm going to start waxing these, get a coat on there mainly so it's just easier for me to get in there, wipe it off, and then I'm probably going to start spoking some of these wheels up. Um, I want to get these spoked, um, get the tires on, tubes in there, and then I can actually start to get this thing to roll. That would be really nice. And then we can keep working on the finishing touches and more parts as I need to order, such as the brake uh, cable, throttle cable, and a few other odds and ends just to get it all assembled. But it's a project and, you know, it takes some time, but we'll keep cranking away. So let me get those wheels going. All right, so we're all polished up here. I got wax on the two rims and then on the two wheel hubs. Looking good, I did ceramic coating, feels really good. Definitely easier to just polish out while the spokes are out for now. So uh, I want to talk about the spokes real quick. Here's the new ones, and then here's the old ones. There's 24 spokes per wheel. The old ones were steel, and the new ones are stainless steel. So that's basically how it's going to look, and it's not a bad matchup. I thought the steel or stainless steel is going to look a little more gray, but it's got a nice polish to it, a nice sheen. So it should come out pretty good. Um, I'm going to start spoking, I believe this is, I think it used to be the rear wheel because it doesn't have any chatter in there. The old front wheelies have something in there. So we'll let that stay in there, stay in the front, and uh, I'll start spoking up this rear wheel. Alright, so I'm getting some spokes installed. Um, I was actually mostly trying to learn the pattern. Um, I was looking at my old video, and this side, the spoke comes in through here, then goes out there. The spoke goes this way, through here, then this goes through there, this overlaps, then you flip it, and they're actually the opposite, meaning this spoke will overlap going left leaning, this goes behind the other spoke right leaning. So it should look like this, so I'm going to start really getting them in there, but I just had to get that pattern down first. All right, let's go. approaching the last spoke here on the first wheel you know I was actually dreading dressing up this wheel but doing it it really didn't take that much time at all so just like that we're all tacked up um, it's still loose I'm going to go around all these nipples here tighten them up and then uh, do my best to true them uh, and get this wheel but I won't be able to do that until I have the bike or the wheel actually on the bike so let me get all these somewhat tightened down and then uh, I'll have to put this on the bike in the future and then get them all, get the wheel true. But it's, I mean, it's really not that that far off, whatever I do. Like it's barely even moving. So maybe I won't, but uh, let's get the rest of them tightened and then see where we're at. All right, so I almost had this wheel trued, but I kept having one spoke just sticking up like crazy. And I couldn't figure out why. I kept readjusting everything 
um, trying to true the wheel all over again, probably three or four times, until I realized it popped it out. Looks like one of the spokes that I was sent is a little longer, so I'm going to assume that's for a 12-inch rim, and these are for my 10-inch rim. So that's my issue. So I'm going to keep putting these spokes. I'm going to use the good spokes, put it back into that spot, and then it should be good to go. I just got to get another 10-inch spoke, I guess. Um, definitely not going to be using these. These are too crusty for me today. So that's where I'm at right now. Um, I was hoping to get this other rim done tonight, but it's getting kind of late. So I will uh, get this rim finished and then order another spoke and get that wheel all situated. All right, so I got this wheel all laced up, except for one spoke. Um, I just wanted to kind of quickly show how I kind of set up these spokes. Um, basically what I did is I took these two spokes right here, which is kind of like a grouping, I'd say. And I kind of tighten them down. And then what I'll do is I'll look at the thread in here, see how deep I went and then just mirror it to the other end of the wheel. For example, I go really loose just where they're tacking, and then I go to the opposite end, and then I tack in these two. And then, I basically just, these are tacked in now. Then I look down there, pretty much try to get, sorry, pretty much trying to get that thread uh, depth matching with this end, and then I go all the way around matching that, this bottom part to this one, and so on, then flipping it, doing the same thing, and then just checking my depth. Like for example, this wheel is pretty much all done, besides me torquing it with the wrench here, they all pretty much have the same depth, because I went from this end to this end, then this end to this end, kind of like doing lug nuts on a wheel. So that's it for these two wheels for tonight. They look really good. I'm actually really happy I went with chrome. Now it's really standing out. The money is definitely paying off, I think. Um, for those of you who are wondering, it was just over a thousand for all the chrome to be done, stripped, and then triple plated, uh, copper, nickel, and then chromium. So that's pretty much it for the wheels. Um, I'll do a quick update once I get that last spoke in there, and then I'll get the tires on. <laughs> And then if I try to go tighter, it just won't. So I guess it's just one and a half turns in. It's pretty funny that that's all that's holding this whole front end on with your front wheel. Not that I think it'll fall off, but this coil breaks right here. The whole front end's coming off. Looking pretty good. I'm throwing this on right now just so I can get the wheel on each wheel. And then I'll true them right off of the front end for both wheels. All right, let's do that. All right, so before I started truing these wheels on the fork, um, I have to push the bearings in and get these pieces in as well and I ran into an issue so here's one of the wheels one of the new bearings it's nice and tight doesn't just drop in this one the new bearings just drop in and they're loose which is kind of a problem um, it must have happened during the plating process whether this was not as stripped off as this wheel um, so I looked into it and people said that there's a Loctite solution that you can put on there and tighten up this gap or punch the bearing and knurl it and make like sharp edges so it'll press in nice. But then I thought, why don't I just put my own sleeve in there made out of electrical tape? I know that sounds kind of silly, but I thought I'd give it a shot. And this is how it came out. So far, it, it did push out quite a bit here and there, but it's pretty tight. I mean, I got it seated and I pulled on it. it spins perfect. It feels good. So I'm going to run with that for now on just this one wheel. Of course, it's the rear wheel. That's going to take a lot of abuse. Um, I can always punch these out and then redo it with Loctite. But for now, this is working, and I don't have it Loctited in there where, I don't know, maybe it'd be somewhat permanent uh, with the Loctite. I'm sure you can punch them out with a good punch, but that worked. So I'm going to run with that for this one wheel and then uh, 
get that all installed. So let me get this situated and then I'll get this wheel done and then we'll start spinning them. All right, last wheel bearing. Pressing it in. All right, bearings are pressed in. So this is the good wheel. This is the front wheel, I believe, that had plenty of bite left in it. And then I actually did the rear wheel with the electrical tape. So from that first clip you saw, I actually removed that bearing and resealed it with electrical tape and put better just more wheel bearing grease in there and press it in and it's very strong i mean i took these pliers right here and uh try to pull it off and twist it and turn it and it's definitely pressed in there tight enough i think um i will find out as i ride um so yeah for now they're looking good so they're still not fully torqued but we got the bearings in now we'll get on the bike and uh spin it around and see what we got going on what's up hank all right so i got both of the wheels balanced as best as i can um basically i watched a youtube video and basically you just tighten all these by hand all the way around and then use the wrench and do your best to get that thing dead straight and minimal wheel hop the other one actually came out better um this is the, my worst wheel but <clears throat> i think it came out pretty good the tolerance is pretty low on how much it wobbles and the wheel hop as well um so i just went around and anywhere where it drifted Let's say it drifted to the left. I tighten the spokes. I loosen the spokes. Excuse me. I loosen the spokes on the left hand side and tighten the right side. And then it hopefully can pull the rim over just a touch. And it takes a while. I mean, it probably took me 45 minutes to an hour for each wheel. But it came out pretty good. I just did a snug tight with this little wrench here. Uh, it's very small, 1364. So that's all set. Now I'm going to get the tires on and uh, hopefully have it looking like a mini bike soon. I think we're almost there. Let's see, oh, that new chrome, I keep hitting it. There we go. That was not easy. Um, these 10 inch wheels, the 10 inch tires, they're just so tight. I just feel like it's always hard to get them on. I feel like if it was the 12 inch wheel, it'd be a lot easier. So I had to put it on with the tire, or excuse me, the first half of the tire, I had to take the tube out, get that pushed on and then put the tube in send it in here let's actually loosen this up had to send the tube in between the tire and the rim after i put half of the uh, tire on then put the tube in and get the other side pressed on i mean doing the other half is easy it's just that first half getting on it's just not not a good time but she's on let's see it looks like it's pretty centered so let's get some air in there Just throwing a little air in there just to set it up, get the tube in the right spot. Wow, there we go. That looks great. Very happy I got it re-chromed. Let's actually loosen this nut up. Now, after I set my tube in place by inflating a little air in there, I actually like to um, take... Hank, you okay? That's my dog. I like to loosen these nuts up here and let the stem flex where it needs to flex meaning i'll have the cap on here with two nuts locking right there and then this can just flex where it needs to be but let's get the well let's see max load looking for that max psi um 36 psi so 
let's just pump these up to 20 let's pump up up to 25 start there all right this wheel is done it looks so good compared to what it used to look like yeah it's all got paint excuse me uh soap all over it fingerprints but looks really good all right let's get the next wheel done i got the tires on the rims hubs connect to the spokes and uh all inflated it's looking really good these were a bear to put on um i don't know if it's just because these are 10 inch rims or what but or the tires are cheap but i had a really hard time getting the tubes in there the tires on the rims but glad that's over so now i'm going to get the front uh wheel on handlebar and the rear wheel i just wanted to roll around and just see how great it looks with this chrome and new paint um and then go from there so let's get started nice the front wheel is on it's looking so much better oh i love the knobby on the front too because it just had the trial wheels on the front um i don't want to spin this too fast because i need to wait that rear end I almost flipped over let's put it on yeah looking really good all right we'll get the handlebar on are on almost flipped the bike over but I had to put some weight in the back now let's get that wheel on okay beautiful got the bike kind of together it's looking like a real bike again um i just tacked this together um i didn't actually put the brake uh drum in there or anything like that this is just to get it on the ground and just see how it looks. Um, so next I'm going to start cleaning up the brake drum, chain sprocket, uh, clean it up, uh, clear them, install them onto the rim. And then I can actually get this properly torqued down and installed correctly. Um, so we'll go from there. Let's get to it. So I got the wheel back off here in the rear and uh, ended up cleaning up the chain sprocket, the brake drum, and then clearing it, as you can see with new hardware. Um, ended up using dish soap in the wire wheel to just hammer off the gunk um just drilling and drilling and wiping off um so it came out pretty nice um i taped off where the brake uh, pads will ride on so of course no clear there but just cleaning all this up new hardware and uh leaving the exposed patina out i think it looks pretty sweet but um teeth are still in good shape so this is pretty much ready to go back on the bike um let me throw this on and uh i'll show that in a bit all right, so the wheel is back on for now until I get the chain um, ordered and installed, but I just want to show you, I used the original bolt, original washers here. I cleared them, cleaned it up, cleared up, just like I did with the uh, sprocket and the brake drum. Um, this aluminum brake drum right here, I actually just cleaned up. I don't need, I didn't even clear it just because it's aluminum, I'm not worried about corrosion. Um, and then I got the old nut on here just to swing on, swing off, because there's like no bite left. I'm going to use that new one once everything's set up, but it's looking pretty nice um yeah so i will keep working on this bike and until next video we'll get more stuff done thanks for watching